Okay, now we're going to talk about using GPS with the River Surveyor. What I have right here is a GPS setup using the Sontec Differential Solution. Right here we have the GPS antenna. Inside here is the receiver, the GPS receiver, and it's connected, the GPS antenna and the receiver are connected through the, by this cable. The whole system is powered through, the, through the, the rechargeable battery pack right here. That includes the powering the ADP and the GPS. So when I begin my measurements, powering it on, you see this light here, it automatically starts looking for the GPS satellites. Once the satellites are acquired, that is, once we have enough satellites to collect data, I'm going to receive this information as a status indicator, and this is actually updated once per second. Okay, a question we get quite often, why, why do we need to use GPS with our measurement? Well, when we're talking about measuring with di measuring discharge specifically, uh, most commonly the technique that we use to collect our position information and our track information is the technique called bottom tracking. Bottom tracking takes an acoustic pulse from this instrument. In this case, this is the M9. In this case, we're going to bottom track off some combination of these beams right here. And we're, we're going to take acoustic pulses for the water profile and acoustic pulses for the bottom prof or the bottom tracking. Okay, bottom tracking makes an assumption that the that the stream bed is not moving. If I'm in, if I have a moving bed, the bottom tracking, as I've talked about earlier, is going to bias the discharge measurement low. So to to overcome that, GPS is a very viable solution. The Sontec GPS actually outputs two types of data strings. The, the NEMA protocol, uh, which is the, v, the GPVT, VTG and the GPGGA. The GGA string is a position-based string, okay? That is, it gives me a latitude and a longitude, an actual position. And I know that position within, you know, with, within actually sub-meter with this type of setup, or if I use the RTK setup within, within a few centimeters. The second string is the VTG string. The VTG string is a velocity-based string, Okay, in that case, it doesn't require a differential correction. Now, when I'm collecting data with this system, the, the limits, there's always limits on, on or limitations, I should say, on, on this type of technology. GPS has the advantage of overcoming the moving bed, okay, and we can, we, we're, we're able to collect a lot of good data. But in order to use GPS successfully, a couple things have to be available. Number one, I have to be able to perform, I have to perform a good compass calibration. So when I'm collecting data, I can't have the transducer anywhere near, uh, in, in anywhere near metal, okay, because it's going to affect my compass. I also need to set a magnetic declination. The magnetic declination is actually uh, specific to a location and time. So you can get that information from a map, from a model, uh, a computer model off the computer. There's several types of ways you can get that. So those are, those are the two things that I need to program first into the system in order to correctly align the GPS with the ADP. The next thing that I, that I want to do is that the GPS does not quite have the precision of bottom tracking, okay? And so in that case, I'm limited on the minimum type, depending upon the correction that I'm using for GPS, I'm limited on the type, the width of river that I can actually successfully operate in. For RTK, there's, using RTK GPS, there's basically no lower limit. It has, we're talking about one to two centimeter precision on position, and that's going to allow me to collect data in streams even less than a meter wide. When I use GPS with a differential correction, that's a sub-meter correction. It's still a very, it's a very good way to collect GPS data, very acceptable, uh, but in this case, uh, on average, I'm going to need between 15 to 20, maybe 25 meters of river width in order to get a nice repeatable measurement using the differential correction. The next limitation that I want to talk about with GPS specifically is multipath. Multipath is actually when I receive a signal here that's been reflected off of a building, off of a tree, off of something, meaning that it's not a direct signal from the satellite. That, okay? Keep in mind, typically I'm receiving anywhere from 7 to 12 satellites here. So I want to make sure that I have a clear path to, to view all of these satellites, number one. And number two, I want to make sure that I'm not getting a reflected signal. A, re a multipath will cause errors in your discharge value. Okay, how bad those errors are, it really depends on the magnitude of the multipath. Uh, in essence, we really want to avoid that. 
the best way to avoid multipath actually is to avoid uh, cross sections that are canopied with trees or measuring up near pilings of bridges or, or, or under overpasses. Things like that are big, big buildings in, in that case. Um, another way w which actually really, really helps the situation in the field is to use a good antenna. Uh, we get a lot of feedback from, uh, from customers uh, using GPS and in fact uh, we've, in, we've, we've incorporated those, that feedback into our, our design is that we want to use a good antenna with good multipath rejection. Okay, I'm not going to go into how all these antennas reject the multipath, but but in essence, there's a in this particular case, there's a choke ring, and this choke, what this choke ring, it doesn't eliminate completely the multipath, but it greatly minimizes its effect. Okay, so when there's multipath is present, make sure that you have a good antenna. If you can, try to avoid trees and large bridges.